working age households. This is where the householder is under age 65, dropped by roughly $5,000 real money. Um, and there's not going to be, with the labor market floundering, there's not going to be much putting upward pressure on that anytime soon. So families are going to be suffering because of the because of the problem in the labor market for the next few years. And then not just the, oh sorry, those were median households, so that's the, the, the household at the middle. And then this also, the next one, it gets at <coughs> what's going to be going on with people at the end. These are poverty rates. You can see big increases in poverty because of the Great Recession. Um, as in 2009, one in seven Americans was living in poverty. This breaks it down by age. This line, the dark blue line is kids. One in five kids were living in poverty. And if you look at kids under the age of six, it was one in four. So kids, our kids are hit harder by poverty just because, largely because they're living in younger families. Just by definition, they're in younger families, and younger families are more likely to be in poverty. So um, kids are hit. Kids are kids have higher poverty rates than grown ups. Um, but you can see the Great Recession has a big effect on that. And there's just not with the labor market floundering, jobs not plentiful. It's going to be a while before there's going to be real downward pressure on these numbers again. Um, and then the other thing is that's been alluded to a bunch here states aren't going to be able to pick up the slack for a while. In fact, we've now <coughs> seen four years of very deep cuts in the state spending because we know states are not allowed to run deficits. And so they have, when, they, when their revenues drop because of a recession like this, and spending increases, spending on safety net things related to unemployment increase, both of those things naturally happen in a recession, their budgets get messed up. And so we've seen this for four years. That, that most states have released their fiscal year 2012 budgets, which start in July 1. And um, states are facing record shortfalls. Four years out, record shortfalls. They're still seeing problems with revenues, rising costs of um, providing services. So we're still seeing record shortfalls. And, th and this is the key. The Recovery Act was providing a huge amount of relief to states, and it's gone. It's there, it, the Recovery Act is done when the federal government is pulling back. So states are on their own now. Um, and there's only about eight states that, have, that still have substantial rainy day funds that can help them out. Everyone else has depleted their rainy day funds, and so states are having to slash dramatically. 39 states in their fiscal year 2012 budgets are proposing major cuts in core public services for the coming year. And what do states spend on? They spend on education and healthcare. And so there's major cuts in education from pre-K all the way to higher education, cuts in healthcare and other important public services, services to the disabled, to the elderly. Everything states do is sort of on the table. So this is my last slide. I mean the next one. <laughs> we are, and this is again, we are, we are out of, you know, barring some huge energy disaster. We're out of this. When we are coming out where the economy is growing, we are adding jobs, we're coming out of this, but it is going to be about three more very lean years in the labor market, three more very lean years as far as state and local budgets go. So we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we can start looking for seriously good news in about 2014, I think, as far as getting back to a place where um, things are, you know, it looks like a, a healthy place. Can you go back to the slide of family income? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is the one more. Yeah. My, my concern is as the income, uh, as I'm sure that some of you guys are saying by 2040, Exactly. 
that's a very good question. So this is this is the median income. So this is this is what the typical person gets. So that reflects exactly what the typical family will pay. And so as we're seeing that not increase, we need the we need the labor market to be functioning well to make taxpayers too, exactly, that we can so the um, one of the the two main things when you hear about the the deficit problems going forward are sort of long run deficit problems, which is a whole nother conversation which we could have if we want. But um, the real culprit for our long run deficit problems are rising costs of health. The only two culprits, too, by the way, are rising costs of health care and revenue issues. And a part of our revenue issues is this. And then a main one is we've really cut taxes on high income earners. And so that's really cut back on our revenues. But those, those are the things that we'll have to move on if we um, really want to be serious about closing our deficit. Um, I'm wondering how confident you are that our, label, our job market, our labor market, can absorb the, the labor force that we will have if we did add 11 million people back in. Mm -hmm. And then also what types of jobs um, you know, we've, we've seen in the Middle East, a um, huge outpouring of social unrest due to college-educated youth who have no opportunity. And I know in this country it's always been if you have a college degree, you're golden, but I think that the premium is not so so set anymore and not so guaranteed. Yes. Are you examining what the future <coughs> labor market might look like? That is a, I like the way you frame that question because it shows that you actually, like you know what's going on. There's a, because I get, we, yeah, and Obama, our, our administration, people sort of act like if everyone gets a college degree, the country will be okay. And it's, that's not what's gonna solve it because the, the BLS puts out employment projections. So you can see what our top experts think is going to be happening by occupation and industry going forward. And then you can translate that. You can look at educational needs in each of those places and then like sort of back out what are the educational requirements going to be going forward. They don't change that fast. They, have, they are growing. Educational, you know, we do need a bigger share of our labor force to have a college degree. But enrollment rates are also generally increasing over time and pretty much keeping up. So this is that thing where if I were going to talk to any 16-year-old, I would say go to college because you will be better off in the labor market if you go to college. But if I'm talking, not that I ever get this chance, but if I were talking to President Obama, I would not say you're going to solve our labor market problems by getting, get, having everyone get a college degree because we're not going to need, not every job is going to require a college degree. The nature of work hasn't changed. When you look around and see what kind of job is being done, you can see it out there. It's not that every job that's done needs a college degree. So it's a really good, it's a really good point. We need to think about how do we make jobs across the spectrum high quality jobs. Can you repeat Last before you go? Last year when we were here, um, we looked at um, a five chart that you had with the causes of the deficit and. You pointed to the um, unemployment um, was the thing of the greatest factor adding to the deficit, and that stimulus spending, we needed more of it, and there was a, a real argument about how to reduce the deficit. Well, what happened in the debate? I mean, how do we get? How do we just lose that whole yeah. spending side equation? Not the revenue. Granted, we need to talk about revenue mm -hmm. as well, but mm -hmm. where, where did the whole debate about adding more jobs through stimulus funding, increasing the deficit, where, where, what happened to that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, we lost it. It, it got the, so I, when I talk to people and reporters about this, I say decisions are being made in this town based on something other than the economics. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what the force, I don't understand Washington. I don't know what the, uh, I, there, 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 there's something else going on because the economics is still extremely clear. When you have the employment to population drop that much and remaining in that much of a hole, when we still have interest rates near zero and inflation showing, it, inflation is increasing right now, but the, the Core inflation, the, the stuff that's really um, getting
gives us an, a signal for what's going on in the macro economy, and it's not just something totally separate. So core inflation is showing absolutely no sign of budging. So, so our big deficits <coughs> right now, when you have big deficits, the things people worry about are it's going to increase inflation and it's going to increase interest rates. Neither of those things are happening. The reason energy prices are growing has nothing to do with our economy. It has uh, everything to do with world events, nothing to do with what we